What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video I will be showing you guys 5 super easy bosses to do in old school runescape that will make you major profit and be a lot of fun as well. When I first started PVMing in runescape I was super nervous for all the bosses and found it overwhelming to try them out. I started with some easy bosses and eventually became more adjusted to the PVM lifestyle and now I love bossing. This video will help you out if you are new to bossing and want to start doing it and also want to make some money in the process. All of these bosses can be done on mid-level or high-level accounts and I will be showing you the gear I would recommend trying to use if you can afford it. I will also show you a lower level tier gear setup that is more affordable and more similar to what I started using when I began bossing. I do have some guides on some bosses that I will leave in the description that will definitely help you out. Some of them are on the bosses that I will be showing you today so check them out if you want to see how to do certain bosses more in depth. If you guys have any suggestions for future guides let me know and I will make it happen. If you are not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe right now to see more of my content and also help us reach our goal of 5k subs because we are so close. The channel has been doing really well lately so thank you so much for the support. Now let's get started with the first of 5 easy bosses. The first boss is a relatively new boss that can actually make you some great profit per hour especially for a mid-level boss. It is Seracnus. Seracnus is super fun to do and I might eventually go for a pet hunt on it because it is so easy to do and I actually enjoy doing it. The gear I use for it is not required and after I show you this setup I will show you another setup that is more affordable. The gear I am using is the Helm of Nadus Knot, the Fire Cape, the Amulet of Torture, the Unholy Blessing, the Abyssal Bludgeon which is best in slot for Seracnus other than the Scythe of course. I'm also using the Fighter's Torso, Bando's Tacits, Barrow's Gloves, Primordial Boots, and the Berserker Ring Imbued. In the inventory I have a Super Combat Potion, 6 Prayer Potions, Dragon Claws because I prefer faster kills but you could use a BGS or a Dragon Warhammer, and the wiki actually recommends using them over the Claws because it lowers Seracnus's defense. I also have a Carol's Leather Top to switch to when the Minion Mage spawns, a Stamina Potion to run there and to restore my run energy if I run out, and a Rune Pouch with Teleport to House Runes because I will be using the Skills Necklace to get there, I do not have the Xerix Talisman, and I will also be restoring my stats at my house. A cheaper setup would be to switch out the Torture for a Glory, the Bludgeon for a Leaf Bladed Axe with a Dragon Defender. This weapon actually out DPSs the Whip just by a little bit, and it is super affordable. Also, switch out the Tacits for the Carol's Skirt, the Prims for the Dragon Boots, and in the inventory switch the Claws for a DDS or a BGS, and if you don't have a house with a Pool and Tellies, just use the Skills Necklace or the Xerix Talisman and a Dueling Ring to teleport to Clan Wars to restore your stats. Now, I will briefly show you you how to get there and explain why Seracnus is easy and why you should consider killing it. When you are ready, go ahead and teleport to your house and use the skills necklace to teleport to the woodcutting guild. Then you want to run north to the newish dungeon and follow the path that I take. If you are a mid-level, you will thoroughly enjoy Seracnus. I would recommend at least 65 to 70 melee combat stats. And if you are a high level who is somewhat new to bossing, this is a great entry-level boss that teaches you different mechanics and how to fight bosses that have different phases. And it also has some prayer switching involved as well. Also, make sure you have a weapon that can cut webs. In my case, I use the Dragon Claws. Once you get to the final web, hop worlds if needed and run inside dumping your spec on Seracnus. I'll briefly explain the mechanics, but look for a guide on YouTube if you are still confused, and if you want me to make an ultimate noobs guide, let me know in the comment section and I will definitely make one. Basically, anytime you are out of melee range from Seracnus, you pray protect from range. Anytime you are in melee distance, you pray protect from melee. Seracnus will attack you four times, with the fourth being a web that freezes you in place for a few seconds. When Seracnus freezes you, just pray protect from range and then run towards her when you can and pray protect from melee until she does it again. It is that simple and it'll help you get used to prayer switching during boss fights if you are new to it. Seracnus also spawns two minions that are super easy to kill and have super low hit points. They spawn once when Seracnus is at 66% health and again at 33% health. When this happens, put on your Carol's top and target the mage minion and kill it and then kill the melee one. Alternatively, you can kill the mage minion and then just tank the melee minion's hits. Seracnus is a great boss and you will make 600k plus GP per hour so it is definitely one of the easiest bosses that is also profitable. The next boss is actually one of my all-time favorite bosses to do and I have a lot of nostalgia with it because one of my first ever videos was on it and it was also when my account was super newbie and a low level. This boss is Barrows which is also technically considered a mini game. Barrows is super easy and anyone can do it regardless of the account. Obviously you want to have some decent mage and defensive stats but low levels can do it as well. If you're interested in doing it and want to see an in-depth guide check out my guide in the 
the description. Once again, the gear I am showing is not required, but this is just a simple setup that can be used and it isn't extremely expensive. However, I will show you an even cheaper setup in a second. The gear is the Helm of Nadas Knot, the God Cape Imbued, the Occult Necklace, the Unholy Blessing, the Trident of the Seas, which could be upgraded or downgraded depending on your level and money, Guthix Dehyde Top, Chaps and Boots, the Book of Darkness, Barrow's Gloves, and the Berserker Ring imbued for the kill count inside the crypt. In the inventory, we have a range switch for Aram, which is the Blowpipe, Ava's Accumulator, and Necklace of Anguish. We also have a melee switch for killing monsters to get kill count, which is the Whip, Salve Amulet EI, and also the Dragon Defender. We also have three prayer potions, a ranging potion, Monkfish, a stamina potion, which we will likely never need, a spade, teleport to house runes, and Barrow's teleport tabs to get there. We will be using my house again to restore my stats, but you could also use a Ring of Duel. A cheaper alternative setup would be this. This uses the dragon boots instead, black dehyde chaps and body, a magic shortbow with rune arrows, a dragon skim and a dragon dagger, and also a super set to speed up kills in the crypt, and the ring of dueling to restore stats and teleport to a bank. The way you get there is to use the barrows teleport tab, and again, I will not go in depth, but if you do need to know more, definitely watch my guide in the description. Basically, you run to each mound and dig with your spade, and kill each of the brothers. The order of which brother to kill is often debated, but the order that I use to save prayer potions is Darok, Aram, Carol, Varak, Guthin, and Torag. You pray protect from melee and use magic against Darok, Varak, Guthin, and Torag. You pray protect from range and use magic against Carol, and you pray protect from magic and use range against Aram. You click on each grave to spawn the brother, but one of the graves will pop up with a chat asking if you want to go underneath. Remember which brother that is and don't go until you kill each of the other brothers. Then, once you've done that, enter the crypt, kill some of the monsters to increase your reward potential. The percentage that you want is around 86%, so an easy way to achieve this is to kill two skeletons and one blood worm, which will give you close to the max amount of runes, and you will not get any bolts, half keys, or dragon medhelms. After that, find the final door after running around. If the final brother does not spawn, click the final chest and the brother will spawn, kill it, and open the chest, teleport out, and rinse and repeat. It may sound complicated, but trust me, Barrows is extremely easy, and I did it as a noob on a a level 50 to 60 combat account. Barrows is truly one of my all time favorite bosses to do, and you will also make great profit. If you complete the Mauritania Hard Diaries, your runes will also be increased by 50% each chest, which does push your profit up quite a bit. Barrows is a little RNG based, but you will make anywhere between 500k to 800k GP an hour with average RNG, and you will have a lot of fun doing it. The next boss is again one of my all time favorite bosses to do because of nostalgia. It is King Black Dragon, also known as KBD. KBD is super easy to do and all you really need is a decent range level. I am using more expensive gear in this initial setup but you can definitely use cheaper setups and I will show you a setup that I used to use all the time that is super cheap and I will show it in a second. My recommended gear is the Guthix Dehyde Coif, the Ava's Accumulator, the Necklace of Anguish, Dragon Diamond Bolts, the Dragon Hunter Crossbow because it shreds KBD, Black Dehyde Top and Chaps, the Dragon Fire Ward, Guthix Bracers, snakeskin boots, and the explorer's ring for a prayer bonus. In the inventory, we have a divine ranging potion, an extended anti-fire potion, four super restores, an antidote potion, sharks, teleport to house tabs, and a burning amulet to get there. A considerably cheaper setup that also works would be the snakeskin bandana, the Ava's assembler, amulet of glory, diamond bolts enchanted, rune crossbow, the anti-dragon fire shield, black dehyde body, chaps, and vambraces, snakeskin boots, and the archer's ring imbued if you can afford it. The inventory is the same, but we have swapped the restore potions for prayer potions because they are cheaper. All right, when you are ready, use your burning amulet and teleport to the lava maze. It is level 41 wilderness, so do be ready to log out. In case there are people here, I'm going to go ahead and log out. Oh, I guess I'm not going to log out. I did see the white dots, so I could have logged out right away, but I'll just try to run away. Juked! Juked! Oh, ho, ho. Juked them out. I'm just going to climb down this ladder. This is where KBD is, so you're going to climb down the ladder, and then you're going to use this teleport, and that's how you get away from PKers. I just got away from that PKer, but anyways, let's just pretend that didn't happen. And once you enter the KBD lair, so someone's here, so we're just going to hop worlds real quick. Okay, I found an empty world. I'll briefly explain the mechanics and what to do 
but KBD is super easy. All you have to do is run up into melee distance and pray protect from melee. Do make sure to drink your anti-fire potion though. You want to stay in melee distance to negate any of KBD's melee attacks. KBD is another boss that I would consider camping to get the pet while making easy profit, and I highly recommend doing KBD if you are new to bossing and want an easy boss, as KBD is the easiest boss to do of all the bosses I will show you, and it may be the easiest boss to kill in all of RuneScape. If you think there is an easier boss, let me know in the comments section. If you do King Black Dragon, you will make around 300k GP an hour, but it can go up 100k depending on your RNG. The next boss is a great boss that seems somewhat intimidating, but it is definitely not. It is Dagonoth Rex of the Dagonoth Kings, also known as DKs. I do have an in-depth guide in the description that you guys can watch to see how to do all of the DKs and also how to solo Rex in depth, but just soloing Rex is super easy and that is why it is in this video. The gear I am using for it is the Varax Helm, God Cape Imbued, Occult Necklace, Unholy Blessing, the Trident of the Seas which could be upgraded or downgraded, the Guthans Plate Body, the Spirit Shield, Varax Plate Skirt, Barrow's Gloves, Devout Boots, and the Seer's Ring Imbued. In the inventory we have Guthans because that is how we will heal while we are soloing Rex. An alternative way to heal is to use Blood Spells on the Ancient Magic Spellbook, so if you want to do that instead you can, but you will lose more money from the runes. We also have 5 Antidote Potions so we can camp there for a long time, 4 Prayer Potions which could even be downgraded to 1 or 2 Potions to make more room for Antidotes or food, a stamina potion to run there, a ruined throwing axe because it is required to enter the path, a pet rock which you can get from the kid in Relica which is also required if you are soloing, and then also a one click teleport to get out of the area if needed or if your trip is done. You could just use full guthans as well but I wanted a little more prayer bonus for the beginning and some more range bonus to tank during the kills. A cheaper setup would be using the amulet of glory instead, the Torag plate body, the book of balance, Torag's plate legs, Bando's boots, and also the explorer ring. The inventory no longer has guthans to heal however I did put a rune pouch in there in case you want to use blood spells and in that case you could bring some more antidotes I put less prayer potions and the only other thing is more sharks the way to get there seems a little overwhelming but again it is not once you have done it once and if you have watched my guide shameless 20th but not last plug there are a few ways to get there the easiest way is to use your own water birth teleport in your house or someone else's player owned house in world 330 but alternatively you could teleport to relica with a house tab and then run to the dock and go to the island once you are ready teleport to someone's house or your own house or relica and go to Waterbirth island you will then run the path that i am running through the cave setting the rock on the pad and running to the rune throwing axe spot you will then throw the axe and begin going down the path to get there the path is actually quite simple you just have to use the right prayers and if you have never done it before look at a map and use my guide and you will easily figure out how to do it once you get to the ladder you can peek and see if anyone is in there if someone is go to the little opening east of the ladder and climb over it and then hop worlds there safely and you can also check inside there's a crack right there that you can look through which is nice once you're on an empty world basically spam click the ladder while praying mage so prime doesn't stack you out and keep going up and down until supreme isn't aggressive towards you this is actually the hardest part about soloing rex which is quite ironic because the actual boss fight is so easy once you have successfully done this it actually took me quite a while here so i did have to eat a lot of food but i really never have to eat again so no worries go ahead and run around the edge and then attack rex and pull him into this safe spot and it is as simple as that. You can actually safe spot him on the opposite side as well but I prefer this spot. Once your kill is done equip your guthans or use blood spells on the monsters on the water's edge and then repeat the process by pulling rex over again and safe spotting him again. Do be careful and do not get too close to the middle or the other side or else prime and supreme will attack you and you will have to restart. Rex is super easy to do even if you are mid level and it is extremely afk if you are a higher level so all you have to do is relax and make bank whenever a berserker ring drop happens. If you also have the Fremenic Elite Diaries done, the bones will be noted which will make you a ton of profit by themselves. The final monster is a little tougher to do with low stats so I would recommend 70 to 80 combat stats at least. I put this boss on here instead of an easier boss because this boss is actually super easy and safe spotable and it also makes amazing money per hour compared to the other easy bosses. The boss is Callisto. Callisto is super easy to safe spot, the only downside is that it is in the wilderness. The setup that I like to use is full Varax, but the cheaper setup will be a range setup, so if you have high range and lower defense, then use the range setup I will show in a second instead. I am using full Varax, the mythical cape, 
Amulet of Glory, Iron Arrows, Rune Gloves, Rune Boots, and the Explorer's Ring. In the inventory, I have an Anacrawl Teleport to get there, 4 Super Restore Potions, 6 Ceridome and Brews, a Super Combat Potion, a Stamina Potion, a Royal Seed Pod as a 1-click level 30 Wilderness Teleport, a Looting Bag, a Magic Longbow to set up the safe spot, Black Dehyde Body and Chaps in case a PK care comes, and the rest is Manta Rays. You could instead use a Vigorous Chain Mace and some Melee Boosting Gear with some Prayer Armor, but I find the Varax setup to be more simple. The the cheaper method is to range Callisto, and you can range with a crossbow as well, but the cheaper and alternative version is the snakeskin bandana with the Ava's assembler or accumulator, the amulet of glory, diamond bolts, rune crossbow, full black dehyde, the book of law, snakeskin boots, and the explorer's ring. The inventory is pretty much the same, but I swapped out some restores for some prayer potions, used less brews, and added some karambons for combo food. Alright, once you are ready, go ahead and break your anacarol teleport. Be ready to log out because this is a popular hotspot for PKers because it is a multi-area. I've never actually had a team there when I log in, but I know it is a pretty popular area. Once you teleport there, go ahead and drink your stamina potion and run to the southeast and run around this lava. And I will show you guys the safe spot I use. I normally just put on my black dehyde here in case there's any PKers. Put your longbow on, equip it, and have it on long range. And let's see if Callisto's here. He might be gone. I don't see him. Okay, so we're going to have to actually hop worlds because this is the area where he normally is. So we'll hop worlds and then I'll show you the safe spot. All right, I'm not going to go super in depth with the safe spot, but once you have found a world, go ahead and long range Callisto and drag him to the far eastern tree that I go to. Also, I recommend watching the guide that I put in the description for how to do the safe spot. I would also recommend using rune light so you can mark tiles like I have. Once Callisto has come towards you and is stuck by the tree, run past these rocks to the south. If Callisto attacks you, just keep running. You can also pray protect from melee so he doesn't hit you as hard then run to this far southern spot on this tile and move to the other tile to the right once Callisto crosses through the two tiles I marked up there and then run up to him and start attacking him in the safe spot and just hang out flicking piety and be ready to hop worlds if a peak hair comes or just run away the peak hairs up here are normally pretty bad since it is a single combat area again this is a safe spot it is super easy with the person's guide I left in the description so check it out if you want to learn how to do it like I do Callisto is a super easy boss once you learn these safe spot and you will make 1 mil GP an hour pretty easily. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully this video helps you out if you're trying to get into bossing or if you wanted to quickly learn how to do these five. If you want another video like this or another five easy bosses to do, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. In the last video I gave you guys a secret word to comment to be one of the few people who watched the entire video and so many of you commented it so thank you for that. This video is considerably longer than the last video so if you write this one in the comment section you will really be one of the only people who watched the whole thing. If you made it this far, comment the word pineapple to confuse everyone. I know it's a tough one to spell, but I believe in you guys. If you guys want to talk in game, join my clan chat Heart Blitz, and also join the Discord in the description. Thanks guys for watching, stay tuned for my next video.